On April 1st, 1957, the BBC aired this news piece. Spaghetti cultivation here in Switzerland is not, of course, carried out on anything like the tremendous scale of the Italian industry. After picking, the spaghetti is laid out to dry in the warm Alpine sun. At the time, spaghetti was not a common dish in the UK. Afterwards, hundreds of viewers contacted the BBC, some to ask how to grow their own spaghetti trees. Years later, CNN would call this broadcast the biggest hoax any reputable news establishment ever pulled off. Merriam-Webster defines a mockumentary as a facetious or satirical work presented in the style of a documentary. You're a cool guy, but you're not pulling your weight in the flat. Oh, I'm glad to hear that I'm cool. No, that's not the point, though. Yeah, no, I know. Not the, I know. Flat. Mockumentary filmmakers go to great lengths to blur the line between fiction and nonfiction. For example, for Spaghetti Harvest, respected newscaster Rick Dimbleby provided the narration. Woody Allen made a similar choice in his film, Take the Money and Run, which featured the voice of Jackson Beck, who narrated many documentaries from the 1940s. Spending most of his time in the streets, Virgil takes to crime at an early age. He is an immediate failure, and barely manages to escape with a gumball machine stuck on his hand. Another key to imitating the documentary style is having your character sound as realistic and natural as possible. When writing A Hard Day's Night, Alan Owen spent extensive time with the Beatles so that the scripted dialogue would reflect their real dynamic. Similarly, in order to have an authentic feeling, most of the dialogue in This Is Spinal Tap was improvised by the actors. When it first came out, people thought it was a real band. And then people don't understand why would I make a movie about a band that nobody had ever heard of and that it was so bad. Spinal Tap has since gained a massive following and is considered by many to be the most famous mockumentary of all time. Christopher Guest, who co-wrote and starred in the film, went on to create several other mockumentaries that also relied heavily on improvisation. Leslie and I have been together five years. We both have so much in common. We both love soup and uh, we love the outdoors. Uh, we love snow peas and uh, talking and not talking. Jenna Fisher from The Office talks about having a similar creative dynamic with the show's creator. I remember when we were shooting the pilot, <clears throat> Greg called me up at home and he said, so Jenna, tomorrow we're gonna do some of your talking heads. And I was just thinking maybe you could talk a little bit about Roy. I don't wanna give you any ideas. I just wanna see what you can come in with. Just we'll ask you about that relationship and you can just talk about it. The Office really catapulted mockumentaries into the mainstream, and as the show progressed, the cameramen became characters within the story as well, breaking the fourth wall in increasingly bold ways. What am I doing wrong, Brian? Nothing. You're doing the best you can. Brian. Give a minute. Let's turn the cameras off. Seriously, guys. Enough. Enough. Even though most audiences can tell the difference between a documentary and mockumentary, there are still exceptions. Some stories blur the line between fact and fiction too convincingly, especially when their objective is not solely comedic. Many people actually believed aliens were invading during Orson Welles' War of the Worlds radio broadcast in 1938. And when the Blair Witch Project premiered in 1999, the promotional marketing campaign listed its actors as either missing or deceased. Several other comedians continue to challenge the divide between reality and fiction by playing a fictitious character that interacts with real people. In the event of your death, we right. have the rights to your name, sure. likeness, sure. Um, DNA as well. Okay. Is that, are you comfortable with that? Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's fine. When asked about the setup for his show, Nathan Fielder says of himself, the version of me on the show is much more obviously controlled and deliberate than the me in real life. A lot of people come into a situation, especially when they're being filmed, and they have a certain idea of how they want to present themselves. And I'm trying to show who they really are in some little way. Since mockumentaries exist as a reflection of documentaries, the genre will continue to evolve as new nonfiction trends emerge. For example, American Vandal makes fun of the rising popularity of nonfiction crime stories, and the series Documentary Now parodies well-known documentaries from over the years. Oh, that's Anthony! Mother, look, it's Anthony! Do you remember him? Of course I remember him. I'm not senile. When the audience feels like they are in on the joke, this is when the genre truly succeeds. The best mockumentaries call out cliches, exaggerate stereotypes, and convince us that the divide between fiction and nonfiction is narrower than we may expect.